Major funding for these broadcasts has been provided by grants from New York Community Bank, Capital One Bank, Eastern Consolidated, MNT Bank, Sterling National Bank, Meridian Capital Group, Customers Bank, Aerial Property Advisors, Perfect Building Maintenance. Additional funding has been provided by AKA Hotels, Corman Communities, Amtrust Title Insurance Company, AVR Realty Company, Avison Young, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, Bank Laumi USA, Briarwood Organization, CBRE, Chase Commercial Term Lending, Chase Mortgage Lending, Citizens Bank, Cohen Equities, Colliers International, NYC, Collins Building Services, Connect One Bank, CPEX Real Estate Services, Dime Community Bank, Douglaston Development, Levine Builders, Flushing Bank, Friedman LLP, Genova Burns, Hendro Properties, Handler Real Estate Organization, HAP Investments, Hodges Ward Elliott Inc., Investors Bank, James D. Kuhn Real Estate Center at Syracuse University, Kilroy Architectural Windows, Madison Realty Capital, Matone Group, Mercantile Bank, New Banks, Newmark Grub Knight Frank, Optimum Window Manufacturing Corp., Peoples United Bank, Polsonelli, Rosewood Realty Services, SJP Properties, Stonehenge Partners, TD Bank, Terra CRG, The Knackle Group at Cushman and Wakefield, Maringoff Family Foundation, The Moynian Group, and these friends. I want to be in the real estate business. I want to be selling. I want to develop. I want to finance. I just love real estate. So today, with the help of my executive producer, Mark Simon, I've assembled four guys all under 30, or I should say all in about the 26-year-old range, who are going to tell me why they got into real estate and how they see the world of real estate. As I said, my guests include Mark Simon, who is a vice president at Madison Realty Capital, Andrew Wolf, who is a, a senior development associate at Whitcoff. Jonathan Schwartz, who is a director at Easton Consolidated. And last but not least, Adam Feldman, who is a development associate at HFZ Capital Group. So thank you for bringing the group together. My pleasure. So wait, you're from Pittsburgh. You grew up in Scarsdale. You grew up in Manhattan. And you grew up in New Jersey. Jersey. For, okay. So... How did a kid whose father was in the auto business, oh wait, we also have to preface, we have George Washington, we have Michigan, we have Tulane, and we have Michigan. Okay, that's why we separated them over there. How did a kid like you decide that you wanted to get involved with real estate? I've always had interest in in real estate uh, stemming from my childhood. My grandfather was a builder in Pittsburgh, as well as being a auto dealer. Um, throughout my childhood, I spent a lot of time on the construction sites and through college held various internships with um, different investment shops throughout the city. Um, upon graduation from GW, I worked for Madison Realty Capital, um, and I've always had a keen interest in real estate from a very young age. I guess you could say I played a lot of Monopoly growing up, but uh, it's just always been a very... Do you know they changed the Monopoly now? You know, it's a Pokemon Monopoly set. Oh, yeah? Yeah, really. But oh. it's the same game, different board. Well, back then it was uh, it was still Boardwalk and Park Place, but I uh, always found real estate to just be a very interesting sector of the economy. And When you were going to high school, did you... Did you think about real estate? I mean, because people who go to Michigan, you know, you have a, an alumni association with the Steve Ross and the Jeff Blau. Uh, the, there's no question that that permeates through the industry. But growing up in Scarsdale. I mean, the town of Scarsdale was a great town. I always found uh, it interesting to see 
kind of who was coming in for new stores and vacancy and turnover. Um, just really find it interesting as a derivative kind of business and understanding how it uh, you know, permeates not only throughout retail but office and, of course, where we all live. Um, so the important lo- uh, importance of location was something that I, I kind of grasped onto very early on and uh, you know, didn't, didn't hurt that Steve and, uh, and Jeff Blau, you know, Michigan uh, Wolverines, had the sponsorship behind us uh, to kind of steer us all, all that direction generally. No the kid who grew up in Manhattan. I think it's pretty easy. You know, from day one, being growing up in the city, you're surrounded by real estate 24-7. Everything, uh, all your interactions, all the restaurants you go to, all the activities you do, it's all revolved around location, location, location. And I think from a very early age, I was able to see that, appreciate that. And as I grew through high school, through college, when I had different summer internships, I was always able to see the angles of how real estate really took a forefront in the, in the world. And from that on, it circled to this. And you, it was in the blood. Yeah. It was so, in the uh, DNA. Of so I didn't really have much of a choice. But, um, but uh, you know, you were saying prior in the green room that you have a brother who, who was also in the business. Uh, you know, your father's a very successful developer. I've known Zio for a long time. You, your brother left the business, okay? Yeah, so my dad actually likes to tell a story, but um, it was so my... Tell the story. <laughs> so it was my senior year of high school, um, which was in 2008, and he had just been involved in the development of an amusement park in Myrtle Beach. Um, it was called Hard Rock Park, and it was a amazing, one of, I think, one of the largest new amusement parks to be developed in recent years. Um, beautiful design. Um, the problem was that it opened in the spring of 2008, um, that was the problem, no question. Yeah, the timing was not great. Uh, so while he was working out his issues there, he took me and my brother down um, to the park to meet with all the partners and to assess how they were going to deal with the uh, couple hundred million dollars of debt that they had on the property that was not going to be paid back. Um, and it was at the meeting uh, when we were all sitting around the table trying to brainstorm um, how to solve this when I realized that this was the industry for me, looking at the creativity that was involved in it, the problem solving, um, all of it was something that really appealed to me. And I think at that same meeting, my brother decided that it wasn't for him and he wanted to go down a different path. Um, Is your brother older or younger? He's two years older than me. And Had he ever worked in the business with dad? Yeah, so after, after college, he worked in the business for about two years. Um, and then he went off Is and Is he opened. also a Wolverine? No, he went to, uh, he went to Penn. Oh, okay. Forget so, him. He's not yeah. allowed to be in this room of it. <laughs> it's not baseball. The subject of conversation at cocktail parties, restaurants, and everything is real estate. And as as everyone alluded, you know, we live here, we work here, we shop here. How hard is it to grow in this industry? Because, as you all said, we all want to get into this business. You've had two jobs, basically, except forget the internships and during college. You've had one after graduation. You've had one really after graduation, and you've had two. How, was it, how difficult was it for you to leave a, a very fine company called Marcus and Millichap to go to even a great company called Eastern? What, what, what caused you, what, what was the reason that you decided to get involved with acquisitions? Sure. Okay? You know, you're an investment sales professional. You're more an acquisitions person. You're more in the acquisitions. I think from my first job, as you said, when I was over at Marcus Millichap, I was able to learn that I had a passion for the business. I saw growth in it, and I knew that I wanted to stay in it. I think after a certain time, though, of having a good start to the business, I realized that maybe I wasn't able to grow as much at Marcus as I thought I could at other firms. Then as I started looking around, I came across Eastern Consolidated. I went into the office. I spoke with both Don Paris and Peter Hausberg regarding the firm. And from there on, I never looked back. Um, Eastern's been a fantastic platform that has allowed me to grow in every possible way in this industry throughout all different product types. And that's really something that from the beginning stages when I started off, I never expected of where I could end up being. And I think now that I, where I see it flower to, I think it could just have see, further but possibilities. Your role is more of a salesman. Correct. Okay, you're a salesman. And you, Mark, are in many ways a salesman also. To because an extent. you're a financing salesman. To an extent, yes. When you were going to, to GW, I know you worked for Madison for a period of time. Did, did you, uh, okay, you could have gone like your buddies over here into the acquisition or the financial analysis. 
How how do you per- grow to go into the financing side? Um, I think a lot of it comes down to growth opportunity, where you can grow as an individual and add value to the company you work for. Um, you know, Madison has has given me that opportunity working both on the equity side in terms of acquisitions as well as loan originations. And the company has grown grown dramatically since I joined the firm as an intern in the summer of 2012. Talk, a bit, talk to me about Square Mile and about Woodcroft. Sure. So coming out of Michigan with a, with a finance degree, um, Square Mile was a dream come true to have a chance to kind of learn on a more uh, integral level the nuts and bolts of finance. And, uh, you know, Jeff Sitch and Craig Solomon, two of the greatest visionaries in the business, seeing all of their financial strategies and, and getting a broad range of experience from everything from, from debt investment to distressed equity and um, – you know, once I kind of felt like I had those analytics under my belt, I uh, had always kind of been very interested in, in the development side and understanding this, the supply side of the supply-demand equation in real estate. Um, and when a, you know, a friend of mine uh, at Whitcoff said that a seat was opening up, I, I jumped to take the opportunity. Um, it's been a great, you know, two and a half years now at Whitcoff and, uh, you know, lo- loving development. Here's a question. Many people say, you know, sometimes you should work somewhere else before you get into that yeah, so I mean, I actually, I spent the summer, uh, my junior year of college, um, I was in Morgan Stanley's real estate private equity group, so I had some exposure um, to an outside firm, um, and while that was a really great experience, and I, I sort of learned the financial side of the business, uh, I felt that development was a place where you could take that financial side and also add an element of creativity and actually build something and create something. Um, so I really just made, I have a great relationship with my dad, um, and I made the decision that um, I wanted to uh, to join his company straight after school. Let, let's talk a little bit about what you're doing today, okay? Each one of you. What, what, what's your role and what, what are your, what's your involvement today in business? So I'm mainly focused on the acquisition side of the business. Um, so a lot of the new deals that come in, um, I'll participate in the underwriting, um, any due diligence that's necessary, um, and then putting together the financing. Um, and I've been particularly focused on some of our projects that are outside of Manhattan. Um, so we, we have a project in Philadelphia, a project in Detroit. Uh, so my focus has been on some of these areas where we've been looking at uh, more urban revitalization um, and transit-oriented development um, to diversify outside of just uh, condos in Manhattan, uh, which has had a great run. But um, with land pricing where it is, we're always looking to find where the next opportunity is. And what are you working on specifically these days? I mean, because Steve is involved in, you have the condo developments, you know, down at 101 Warren. Uh, then you have Times Square over here, and, you, and then you always have additional work. Certainly. So I guess similar to Adam, I'm, I'm very focused kind of on the day-to-day uh, analysis and underwriting of new opportunities that come in. Um, and then once we've got a deal under, under control, taking care of diligence and uh, kind of assisting with the execution until closing. Um, and, you know, in addition to projects you mentioned, we're, we're definitely focused on gateway markets in the U.S. Um, and trying to find inefficiencies in the market right now. And you, Mark? So I do uh, loan originations as well as um, equity acquisitions at Madison. Um, we've been extremely busy on the debt side, just given the pullback from traditional lenders over the last six years. Anything that's complex or has a story or there's some sort of distress involved usually ends up on our desk. Um, and it's been a very active past six years for us in the debt space in New York. So when I'm sitting over here, and it's perfect that you're, you're parallel to each other over here, M- Mr. Schwartz, who is the investment salesperson, really has an opportunity to be networking with all of you over here, okay? Because if he has the, the right opportunity, he could bring you a buyer, you know, a, a product, and he also, if you're ready to sell, he could sell the property over there. Is that how you've been, been getting much of your business? Because how does a, a young, okay, true, we're all, you're in the real estate business. The question is, how do you grow to the next step over there? How do you network? How do you, how do you meet people who can help you in your career? You know, I think it's, you re- first off, you have to put yourself out there. Without putting yourself out there and without p- pounding the pavement, nothing's going to happen. And in this business, you make your own luck. And by doing so, you know, things, 
they say it's a snowball effect. And you, from doing one deal, it moves on to the next. From one contact, you meet somebody else. And it's kind of just natural you know, growth. You, you went to school in Manhattan growing up. Mm -hmm. Okay, your family lived in Manhattan. Um, I recently met somebody who you know, uh, who went to GW, and she was a young girl in the uh, apparel business who left the apparel business and wanted to become a broker. Mm -hmm. And she believed, and I and I agree with her, that many of the people that she went to school with in Manhattan are potential people to be acquiring, as opposed to your type of products that you're selling, sure. uh, buying and selling condominiums. Many of the people that you went to school with, you grew up, are they in the real estate business? I'd say there are a handful of people that I grew up with here in the city uh, that I went to elementary school, high school with, that I still work with to this day. Um, we've done deals together, and I hope it continues to flourish. It's definitely great to you, do. Adam? Yeah, we actually, me, I think all of us here, we're, we're involved in a, a, a group called Young Empire that we put together, which is of all the... Uh, uh, a, a large group of young real estate people in the business, and Mark was actually involved in a transaction. I think that um, uh, that had, that was uh, the discussion began in the Young Empire group. Uh, so it's actually been great networking with people, um, even at our level. Um, you know, some of the younger guys um, were out there hunting for transactions and uh, talking to each other and trying to make connections. Mark. Absolutely. Um, you know, real estate, especially in New York, is, is such a relationship driven business. Um, a lot of the deals that are completed and generated and originated come through networking and relationships and friendships. And a lot of those have been, you know, garnered throughout um, childhood and college and You're the kid post from Pittsburgh. You didn't know these guys over here. <laughs> I, I mean, no, no, but I, I'm not. I'm, but I, I think that's true. Um, what about yourself? How do you think? So a lot of our business, you know, comes from great relationships with great brokers. Um, and then, of course, Steve Wickoff's network, who's been in the business for years and years. And, you know, through groups like Empire, you know, hopeful that one day we'll have this kind of uh, experience and, and uh, the ability to kind of do business together with our friends. This business is great, great friends. I was saying prior in the green room that when I was growing up, uh, Real estate wasn't, first of all, they weren't real estate curriculum. They didn't have real estate programs. You know, it wasn't part of undergraduate. And even the graduate, they weren't graduate programs. I'd say that the world has changed more that real estate is, you know, their master's programs in real estate, you know, their undergraduate advanced programs in real estate that helps over there. What would you say to somebody, follow, okay, you're 26, but people come to you from, you know, from Michigan to Lane, George Washington, they want to, they want to go over there. Um, when somebody comes to you and calls you up and says, I'm looking for an opportunity, what do you tell them about getting into the business? I mean, because it's a, it's a great business, it's a great industry, but there are only limited opportunities and not everybody is, is the right person for the right job. I think a lot of the times, I mean, for starters, you need to have the desire and the want to be in the business and create something great. I think you have a lot of, you, there are different types of people obviously in the world, in the real estate business, we're all have more have an entrepreneurial mindset. In other businesses, if it's not something that you wanna go out on your own and hunt for, I don't think it's right for you. So you're saying somebody who gets into the real estate business has to have a, a degree of um, take a risk? I would definitely say so. Yeah, I, th I think that's uh, okay, it's something that's required in this business. I think, I think you have to have a mix of analytics and a great personality to really succeed in New York real estate. And it's really a balance of both. Um, you have to understand people and you have to understand the numbers that go into the deal. Definitely that. And then, uh, you know, just commitment and passion. Um, it's not a nine to five kind of job as we all know. And um, it's those late hours where you really learn the most and um, kind, kind of develop. Now, w with regard to that, how do how do your y your superiors look at you running around? You know, as, as you say, it's not a nine to five job. Okay, how do they look at networking? How, you know, th there's different views for different companies. You know, if you if you had stayed at Morgan Stanley in that institutional type of investing, they don't care about you going out to network. They want you to be there six days a week or even seven days mm -hmm. a week over there. How do, you, how do the companies and your friends 
see this market today? You know, how much time do you have for networking, schmoozing, and going out there? And how much time do you have to spend? Because when you have a responsibility of an acquisition closing or a financing closing or something like that, or a contract, time is of the essence. Sure. Right. I mean, I think it, it is. It's sort of dependent on which which side of the business you're in. Yeah. So you know, we 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 all have friends that are on the banking side of the business, and they may be working longer hours. Um, but to the extent they decide they want to move to a uh, a developer or a private equity shop afterwards, they will then uh, enter that firm um, in a more senior position than someone that started at that firm originally. So it really um, you can use your time different ways. Um, as a developer. Um, we're out there at, 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 at my level. I'm out there looking for deals. Um, so I try and balance my time between um, being at the office and out and uh, being at these networking events, too. You know, I think my cell phone is definitely a major component of my office. I mean, I could work from it from pretty much anywhere. But during, I mean, during the main hours of the day, I always like to be at my desk. I like to be sitting there making phone calls, sending emails, whatever it may be. After hours, it's always great to go out, catch up with friends, clients in the business, and interact, see where, see where business could lead to. You never know what's going to happen by putting yourself out there. But I think during the day, it's, you definitely need to be focused on your main bread and butter. Andrew? Steve's very supportive of our, our development. And uh, you know, there, there's no question, though, that to the extent there are responsibilities and obligations in the office, we're going to be there. Uh, deals deals got to get done. We're, we're executing, and we're, we're there. Mark? Um, I'm, I'm fortunate to work under great leadership at Madison Realty Capital, uh, where they encourage networking and business development. Um, as Adam mentioned before, um, I'm involved in the Empire Group along Adam and Andrew. Um, and it's been a you know, tremendous asset to myself as well as the company. Um, just through the group alone, we've closed over $300 million in transactions over the last year. And it's been a great thing for all of us. So f for my audience to understand, what was Empire? There are networking organizations, BNA, you know, uh, Executive Association, where basically these networking organizations are different people from different industry. It sounds to me that Empire is basically a fraternity of men and women who are in the real estate business. Well, about 2012, uh Former guests of your show, Spencer Pariser and Drew Popkin, together got together and said, uh, you know, we want to associate ourselves with some of the best and brightest up and coming in the industry. Um, and, you know, was fortunate to be part of that, that group. And Adam here has kind of spearheaded a, a younger chapter as, as that group has evolved. Um, and, you know, we look forward to, on a quarterly basis, getting together, uh, socializing, but also, you know, doing business and, and, uh, and getting together. How many members are in Empire today? Between between the two, uh, the older and the younger group, it's about a hundred. What type of assets? Uh, all components of real estate. We have lenders, we have developers, um, we have PE shops. So we try and touch um, pretty much every component. In in today's world of social media, how involved are each of you uh, or your firms with regard to, uh, you know, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, apps, and so on? Your company and yourself personally? My company itself, they, they are on all the social media apps, uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. You know, it's definitely a great way of being able to promote what's going on in the business. I think so, at least... So how does Jonathan Schwartz promote himself? I promote myself through going to network events, putting myself out there in the industry. I definitely like to uh, have firsthand accounts with people. But on the other hand, I have a great support system being Eastern Consolidated. They definitely help push me up onto the podium and get into the world further. What about HFZ Capital? So, I mean, we're largely focused on condos in Manhattan. So we have social media accounts that are project focused. And we do a lot of uh, marketing for our condos through Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, all of them. Uh, and we'll put up pictures. And how about and, you, uh, you personally? It, and, and myself, I use it as a, as a tool as well. Yeah. Mark? Um, at Madison Realty Capital, we're in the process of, of building out a, a major marketing team and going forward with a tremendous marketing effort that's going to come out very shortly. Um, you know, currently we have a few condo projects that we market deal by deal, one Great Jones Alley, as well as a condo project on Irving Place in Gramercy. 
Um, on the debt side, we're continually marketing uh, recent closed transactions, and we look forward to expanding that in the near future. Now, I, I know personally, Steve, for many years, never really had a great website, but he's really it's changed right now. Brand new website. There's a Whitcoff uh, Instagram account. I hope you guys are all following. Um, personally, I, I don't do a lot of social media, but uh, I clearly see the importance of it. What about LinkedIn? You know, a lot of I, I see a lot of business people are on LinkedIn, especially U.S. Truly also. But uh, have, do you see? Uh, are you involved with LinkedIn? I found my first job through LinkedIn, um, so I definitely think it's a useful uh, site. I think a lot of people have met, met uh, other individuals and respective businesses through it, and I think it definitely has potential for great growth. Let's talk about uh, undergraduate universities. How important do you believe they've been helpful in the growth of uh, your career in real estate? I mean, you're Tulane, okay? Sure. We won't, we won't, you know, they have a much better uh, basketball team, <laughs> okay? Also, I'm biased because I have two sons who are Wolverines. But how is the Tulane networking uh, is there a real estate association or a group of there people? isn't there isn't a real estate association you know i think definitely by growing up in the city that was definitely gave me a leg up in the industry i think if i was let's say from pittsburgh it would have been harder with tulane of getting in there See, but he has good personality he does so it, 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 <laughs> he has he has his uh, characteristics to make up but you know i think just also in the past couple of years i think real estate has become much more of a focal point even from the finance industry and a lot of schools now I think are adding real estate curriculums from what I'm hearing from when I speak with undergrads asking for advice that there are more of these programs that are kind of help to get people up and running. Now besides the fact that Ross and Blau went there, are there real estate concentrations right now at Michigan? As, a, as of the time that we graduated there wasn't a real estate concentration uh, so they offered one or two courses but um, I majored in finance, um, and that provided a great background for real estate and something to, uh, to leverage once I got into the industry. Next question. Uh, how important do you think it would be for each one of you to have a master's in real estate or a, a postgraduate degree? It definitely wouldn't hurt. I don't necessarily see all the benefits that it has associated with. You know, in the industry, you could see somebody who could be the smartest guy in the world doesn't mean that he's going to do well in the real estate right. business. Also, you need to have, you have your the highest degree or the lowest or the exactly amount. It's I th really, I think it's a little chutzpah, a little nerve and heart of of that. But the best thing from the those classes are going to be is that is the networking. I mean, the networking, right. the people that you meet through the master's programs. That's the value there. That's I think really where all the value lies. So if I if I had a look at my crystal apple, okay. And I bring you back because uh, in a couple of months I'll be starting my 17th season. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've had uh, people from every one of your companies on my show. And I've seen them progress. And I think hard work, uh, networking, uh, honesty, um, being able to adapt is really important. And I'd like to thank uh, my executive producer, <laughs> Mark, for bringing... Uh, uh, Andrew and Jonathan and Adam, and I'll see you next week.